Hey guys, I'm Gamer Mate. Welcome back to a new video. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing to make your very own inventory system. So let's go into the video. First thing, you need to make a GUI like this. So what I did was add in a screen GUI, then named it to inventory GUI. Inside of that, I added in a frame, then named it to main frame. Then the anchor point is set to 0 0.5, comma 0 0.5. Then the position is set to 0 0.5, comma 0, comma 0 0.5, comma 0. Then the size is 0 0.8, comma 0, comma 0 0.8, comma 0. And for the size constraint, that is set to relative yy. Oh yeah, I forgot to um, remove the script. Anyway, we'll be doing that later. Carrying on, in the main frame, I added in another frame, then named that to item frame. And the properties of this is the same as the uh, main frame. So 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 for the anchor point. Then for position 0 0.5 comma 0 comma 0 0.5 comma 0. Then the same size, so 0 0.8 comma 0 comma 0 0.8 comma 0. Then relative yy for the size constraint. Then in the item frame, I added in a text button and named it to sample. So this sample is going to be the main base of each item once we collect the item. And the properties for this, the anchor point is 0, 0. Then the position is 0, 0, 0, 0. Then the size is 0 0.3. 0, 0, 0.3, 0. And the size constraint is relative x, y. And if you're wondering why I can't change size and add this little warning mark, that is because I have this UI grid layout, which is really important. So make sure you add that inside the item frame. Basically, what a UI grid layout will do is if we duplicate this button, you can see it, it like lays it out as a list. So, the properties of this, the cell padding is 0 0.05, comma 0, comma 0 0.05, comma 0. And then for cell size, it's 0 0.3, comma 0, comma 0 0.3, comma 0. So, what cell padding does is this is how much space is in between each button, like this. And for the cell size, is how big each button is. I also just have a text label named to title in the main frame for this text and a button just to open and close it which is named toggle button. And inside the toggle button there's a local script which has a variable for the main frame which is script.parent.parent.mainframe because the script is the script itself the first parent is a button, the second parent is a screen GUI, and the mainframe is the mainframe itself. This script.parent on mass button one click. That is the script and its parent, which is the actual button. Then once the button has been clicked using mass button one click, we will set the mainframe dot visible, so its visibility equals to the not what it is already. For example, if a frame is invisible and we click it, then it'll say it to not what it is, meaning it'll become visible. So yeah, if we close off the script, then click the main frame, go in properties, then change visible to unticked. Also, just make sure the toggle button is inside the GUI and not the frame. Then we need to add in a remote event. If we go to replicate storage, click plus, then add in a remote event. Then in properties, change the name to inventory event, like that. Once you have that, insert the script service, click plus, then add in a script. If you want, you can rename it. I'll just name it to inventory event, not event, uh, script. Inside of it, if we remove this print, and then make a variable for the um, remote event. So local inventory event equals game, the replicate storage. 
dot inventory event like that. Now we're going to be using a player added event. So each time a player joins the game, they'll have a new folder created inside of them, which is the actual inventory. So type in game dot players dot player added colon connect two brackets function two more brackets and then player. Now if we make a variable for the actual inventory, so local inventory equals to instance dot new two brackets speech marks and then folder. Then in between speech marks and brackets to make comma and then player. Also, I'll be explaining what each thing does after we've wrote it. So if you type in inventory dot name equals to speech marks and then inventory. Now we're going to be using a child added event to check when a new child has been added to the inventory. So if you type in inventory dot child added colon connect two brackets function two more brackets and then item okay so now if you type in inventory event colon fire client brackets then player comma item dot name comma true then if you go down from its end, then if you type in inventory event dot on server event colon connect two brackets function two more brackets and remove on then type in player comma item name comma value then go down now we're going to be using an if statement to check if a value equals to false. So if value equals equals to false, then. Now we can make a variable for the selected item. So local selected item equals to player dot inventory colon find first child. Then brackets. Then item name. Now if you type in if selected item colon is a bracket speech marks, then model, then you scroll down a bit, then selected item dot parent equals to game dot workspace. Then select as item colon set primary part C frame brackets then player dot character dot humanoid root part dot C frame plus vector three dot new brackets then zero comma zero comma two then underneath this, type in else, then select as item, dot parent equals game dot workspace. Then select as item, dot C frame equals to player dot character dot humanoid root part dot C frame plus vector three dot new two brackets then zero comma zero comma two okay so let me explain what all this is starting from the top first thing we make a variable for the remote event basically what this is it's like a shortcut to get the actual inventory event without typing in all this each time so this game dot players dot player added is an event. So every time player joins the game, then we get the player. So basically, this player is each player that joins the game. 
then we're making a variable which equals to a new folder that we create inside the player. Then we set the name to inventory. Then this inventory dot child added with item is every time something is added inside the folder of the inventory, then that's what item is. Then once something is added inside the inventory, we're firing the remote event to the client, which is the player, with the item's name, and then true. So the true means we're adding the um, the item to the GUI. And then down here, so once the remote event has been fired to the server, then we're getting the player, the item name, and the value again. And if value equals to false, so if we want to remove an item, then we're getting a variable for the item that we want to remove by finding it in the place inventory. Then we're checking if the item is a model, and if it is, then we set the parent to the workspace, and then we set the C frame to the character's humanoid root part, but then like an offset. Then this else means if it isn't a model, like a part or something, then we set the parent to a workspace. Then the C frame equals to um, the humanoid root part again with that offset. So we're just using a different way to set the C frame. So yeah, this is the first script. If we close it off, the next script is if we go to the main frame, click plus, add in a local script. Once again, you can name it if you want. I'll just name my two imagery event. Why do I keep saying event? Imagery script, not event. Okay, so now remove the print. So local inventory event equals game. Do I replicate storage dot inventory event? Then we'll make a variable for the item frame. So local item frame equals to script dot parent colon find first child bracket speech marks then item frame then imagery event dot on client event colon connect brackets then function, brackets, then item name, comma, value. Now we're going to be using an if statement to check if value equals to true. So if value equals equals to true, then now we'll make a variable for the item button. So local item button equals to item frame colon find first child, bracket speech marks, then sample, as our brackets to a colon, then clone brackets, then go down and type in item button, dot visible equals to true, then item button, dot name equals to, then item name, then item button dot text equals the item name then item button dot parent equals the item frame now we go down and type in item button dot mouse button one click colon connect two brackets function Two more brackets, remove one, then go down, then type in item button, colon destroy, brackets, then inventory event, colon fire server, brackets, then item name, comma, false, like that. Okay, so what's happening here is we're getting a variable for remote event again. And a variable for the item frame. Once again, these are just like shortcuts. Then, once the inventory event has been fired to the client, we get the item name and the value. And if the value equals to true, so once an item has been added, 
Then we're getting a variable for the sample and cloning it. Then we set the properties, so the visible equals true. So we can actually see it. Then the item button dot name equals to the item name. So once again, the text equals to the item name. Then the parent equals to the item frame. Then once the button has been clicked, then we actually destroy the button. Then fire in the remote event to the server with the item name so we know which one to get rid of. Then the false means we actually get rid of it. So yeah, let's see if this works now. So close it off. And now we actually need to make some items to pick up. So we we'll test it out with a part. So if we group it like that. And to actually pick these up, we need to add in a click detector. If you want, you can also use a proximity prompt. Then in the part, add in a script. If you want, you can name it to pick up script. Like that. And this script is going to be really short. So if you make a variable for the item, so local item equals script.parent, then item dot click detector or proximity prompt if you're using one of them dot mouse click colon connect brackets function two more brackets and then player then item dot parent equals player colon find first child bracket speech marks then inventory, like that. And if you want to do it for a model, an important thing is, if you click it, and in properties, make sure you have a primary part set to one of the parts inside of the model, like this. So just make sure it always has a primary part. Then we we'll just copy paste that script and click detector, and then paste it in the model like that. Now we click play. Okay, so if we click open, you can see that, oh, we forgot to change the visible. So just make sure that the um, sample is invisible. Okay, so if we click play. Okay, so click open. You can see we have nothing inside it. Then, if we click apart, it disappears, click open, then you can see we have a part, and if we click it, then we drop it out of the inventory, we can pick it up again, like that. And the same should also work for a model, there you go. Now it's inside the inventory, we click it, and then we drop it. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. If this video helped, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. In the description, you can check out my Roblox group and Discord server. And I'll see you later. Bye!